Welcome to the Deep Dive. We're here to uh, cut through some of that digital noise for you. Yeah. Ever feel like your email client is just, well, working against you? Maybe you're drowning in messages or the interface just drives you crazy. Yeah. So today, we're trying to help you find maybe a better digital home for your email. We're doing a deep dive into three big players, Blue Mail, the, uh, the classic Thunderbird, and its sibling, Better Bird. We've looked at sources like the Toby Teaches YouTube channel to pull out the key insights for you. Okay, let's unpack this and see which one might be the best fit. Yeah, and what's really interesting is how different these tools actually are. Even though they all handle email, they're aimed at pretty different needs. Choosing the right one isn't trivial, you know. It can genuinely boost your productivity, how organized you feel day to day. The right tool, um, it almost becomes part of how you work, how you think. That's a really good way to put it. And these three, they definitely have their own lanes. Let's start with Blue Mail. Our research points to it being like the modern mobile first option. When we say mobile first, what does that actually translate to for someone using it every day? Is it just to be using it on your phone? Oh, it's more than just convenience. Think about really cutting down the clutter in your inbox. Blue Mail has this uh, sleek design. It brings all your accounts, Gmail, Outlook, you name it, into one place. Clean. But the uh, the really standout thing is it's AI, predictive AI. Okay. It tries to figure out what's important to you, filtering out noise before you even see it so you can focus. It's all about simplicity, efficiency, especially if you're basically living on your phone or tablet. Right. So Blue Mail sounds perfect for the mobile-centric user. Mm-hmm. What about desktop power users, mm-hmm. people who want you know total control? That brings us to Thunderbird, doesn't it? That name's been around forever, since 2003, I think. Yeah, exactly. Thunderbird is free, open source, comes from Mozilla's MZLA technologies. It's definitely the choice for the uh, power user, or like you said, someone who wants to build their own setup. The digital architect, maybe. Ah, Yeah, I like that. It's not just about themes, it's about really customizing your whole email workflow. You get really robust filtering, tons of add-ons, calendars, chat, pretty much anything you can think of. And it supports all the standard protocols, IMAP, POP3, SMTP. So it works with almost any email service out there. So deep customization works with everything. Sounds great. If you need that level of control, yeah, Thunderbird's been the standard for ages. Okay, so it sounds incredibly powerful, but it does get some criticism, right? Why do some people find it uh, challenging? Is the interface really that dated? Well, that's the common knock against it. The power is definitely there. But yeah, the interface can feel a bit old school compared to newer apps. Yeah. And updates, well, they haven't always been the fastest. It's reliable, like an old truck maybe gets the job done, but maybe not the smoothest ride. Okay, I get that analogy. For some users, that less modern feel is just a bit of friction they don't want. And that friction, that leads us perfectly into Betterbird. It's newer, but based on Thunderbird, a fork, they call it. Exactly. It uses the same core Thunderbird code, but has its own independent development team. Think of it like Thunderbird, but maybe faster moving. They can add features or fix bugs more quickly, target specific user requests. So addressing those pain points people have with Thunderbird. Precisely. Betterbird aims to give you that solid Thunderbird foundation, but with a smoother, more reliable experience day to day. Fewer crashes, fewer weird glitches. It keeps all the Thunderbird features people love, but adds things like a proper system tray icon, faster bug fixes, even a multi-line view that some people like from Outlook. Oh, interesting. And it's still highly customizable, plus it uses Thunderbird profiles, so switching over is apparently really easy. So it's for people who like Thunderbird's power, but want something more polished, more stable. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. It hits a nice sweet spot. Okay, let's quickly recap then. We've got Blue Mail, modern mobile first AI features. Great if you're always on your phone and like simplicity. Right. Then Thunderbird, the open source veteran. Huge customization, tons of add ons. Ideal for the desktop power user who loves to tinker. The classic choice for control. And finally, Better Bird. Basically, Thunderbird refined, takes the power, smooths out the rough edges, adds quality of life stuff, stability plus features. Yeah, you've nailed the core differences there. And if you zoom out a bit, it's not just about comparing feature lists, is it? It's about how does this tool actually fit into your life, your workflow? The right email client should make things easier, less frustrating. Turn email back into an efficient tool, not, you know, a chore. Absolutely. And our sources, they kind of lean towards blue mail if mobile is your main thing. Yeah. But for the best overall Thunderbird experience, minus some of the headaches, they really highlighted Better Bird. But ultimately, it really depends on what you need, doesn't it? Mobile focus. 
deep customization or that polished stability. And that brings up a key question for you, the listener. Forget features for a second. How might trying a different approach to email actually change how you interact with it every day? Could changing your client maybe unlock more focus, more productivity for you? It's worth thinking about. That's a great final thought. We definitely encourage you to give them a try. If you're curious, see which one clicks with how you work. That's all for this deep dive. Until next time.